All right, so I guess this is uh, video worthy, maybe. The extreme DIY channel. We don't really do things that aren't extreme. Um, so this area of my deck, which is, here's the boat and we're on the front. Slope of the upper deck on the front was uh, kind of squishy. And you can see that awesome seagull shaped stress crack in the paint. And that's probably from people stepping on this area or leaning on it. <clears throat> so I decided to shore it up. Um, didn't know if it was hollow or not. So I took my, my hand drill that's over there. Power drill. Drilled holes in it. Uh, just did one test hole to see if it was hollow. Sure enough, it was. And uh, how you test that is you drill until it goes through the first layer. It hits the second layer, you stop. You know it's hollow. Um, if you think that you've gone through the first layer and you stopped on the second layer, then stop and check and make sure you can't go all the way through. Sure enough, this area is hollow. So, uh, you know, boat manufacturers are not going to go the extra mile and do these fancy curve sections with any kind of coring, especially in 1974. Um, when they didn't really have things like spray foam, had the technology and stuff. So what we're going to do is go back and fix that problem. Uh, this way people will be able to lay on this area if they want to, prop their back on it. I don't have to worry about my boat failing eventually in the future. All right, so the first step is take your drill, like I said, drill a test hole, make sure it's hollow. You can do this for any part of your boat that is hollow and that you want to shore up. Um, so once you know that it's hollow and you want to, you have determined that you want to fill it with foam, go back and create a diamond grid pattern like this. Uh, you know, spread it evenly about, about this far apart. Here's my hand to let you know, you know, how far it is, how far apart the holes are. You want to make the holes big enough so that this hose can fit through them and not much more because you're trying to spray the foam in there and keep it in there you want it to expand in the hollow cavity all right uh, how did I get to this determination of this width I don't know I just did it and it ended up working out you can see in this hole there's foam in there I haven't sprayed anything in there and there's foam in there so that's about how far apart the foam spreads. Kind of getting a feel for your material. Um, this is a can I just did. It's pretty much spent. It's out of gas. There's probably still more stuff in there. Um, these cans say this is the great stuff. Window and door. Um, this is the more expensive one. It's about $2 more. There's some reason on the can that says this is better for marine applications. I forget what it is. Maybe I'll do a video on that. I don't know. But they say you can use it only once. That's not true. If you know how to do it, you can do it twice. Um, but the last can I did that I used twice, I had to cut the hose a little bit to get the stuff out of it. Not a big deal. Um, <clears throat> so you're going to take your... Uh, your can, follow directions, shake it up. It says one minute on the can. I'd already been shaking this, but we're gonna see in this hole. Yeah, that's pretty uh, not filled up. So you're gonna spray it in the hole. You wanna kinda keep your can as vertical as possible. That's how these cans work. And you're kind of getting a feel for how much you're putting in there. And that's about good. Put in the next hole. Like that. You don't want it up against the, uh, the inner piece. You can feel it. You want it to kind of flow in the center and spread out. So that it can uh, get out before it expands. There you can see that one is expanding already, shooting itself out. That one's good. 
these ones I didn't get to yet over here. So that's how you do this. That's why I'm doing this video. I don't know. People really haven't shown this on the uh, the YouTubes. So I figure that's why I might make a video. So this is going to make an expanding foam disc on the inside basically, it's going to expand in a circle from this hole. That's fine, you're not looking for a really solid core. Um, the reason that I'm doing this, and I might do this on more areas on my boat, is that it. Um, I want to make sure, because I plan on taking this out in the ocean at some point, and I want to make sure that the, uh, the hole is nice and stiff. Now, the reason on the lower end, the bottom uh, two-part hole, that they have empty cavities is so that water can rush down into your bilge and you can pump it out if it gets in there. Um, so maybe on the lower ends of your boat, you don't want to do this. But anything like below the waterline, you don't want to do it anything above the waterline. I say why not? It's uh, it's gonna be strengthening your boat. Get in there. It's gonna be strengthening your boat and giving it a much uh, a stiffer hull, so you can take it in the big waves and not have to worry about it. So I'm gonna pause this video right now and. Um, finish this up and then talk about the next part like what you do after this so uh, let me pause that video so after you're done spraying your holes and you know I didn't get this far with this can um, you're gonna take a countersink bit like this on your drill and you're, uh, you're first you're gonna scrape off all the foam so you get it back down to knowing where your holes are at. Just use anything, putty knife, whatever, scrape off the foam once it cures up. Uh, the can says like eight hours, so give it a day to rest or whatever, a couple hours at least, you know, check it, make sure it's, uh, it'll break off on its own. When you're done with that and you know where the hole is at, take your countersink bit, drill out the hole to fan it out, and we can see what kind of a profile side cut away the hole you're going to get and uh, once you do that drill it out you're going to take this stuff or some product that's similar some kind of putty fiberglass and you're going to fill in the hole and I'm not going to go over how to mix this stuff follow the, the uh, directions on the can use this stuff uh, fill in your hole after you fan it out with the drill bit and once it sets up within the, you know, the direction, time span of when it's supposed to set up, check it, knock on it, make sure it's nice and hard and not sticky. Go back over it with a sander, sand it flush, and then you can paint this area. Now, I wouldn't do this on a deck that you have already painted and that is in good condition. I would do this when you're, you know, in that time frame where you're like, oh, I'm going to redo my deck or wherever, redo that surface, wherever you're like, oh, I'm going to redo the surface. Because when you use this stuff, it's green. It's going to leave patches, and you don't want to... It's not going to be cosmetically appealing. So when you're redoing the cosmetics of the surface, consider doing this. I recommend it. Um, so then when, you, when you're done, you sand it all up, and, you know, sand the entire surface, you're ready to paint it. So that's why I'm doing this. I have to redo my entire deck. Um, and I figured while I'm at it, before I sand the entire thing and paint it, might as well go ahead and reinforce all the hollow bits. And uh, this is one thing that was on my checklist that I had to do. Um, so that's that's why I'm doing this. So I'll be, I hope you uh, you guys find this informative. I hope you guys have an outstanding day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm out.